Welcome everyone. Welcome to this session for ACCA paper F7 or financial reporting. Welcome everyone, please. Hope my voice is clear and my screen is visible to all of you. Okay. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ziarana and I'm teaching multiple papers of ACCA, including taxation, the financial reporting, and advanced taxation. I'm in teaching profession since last nine years and I'm dealing with all these papers. I would appreciate if you please mute your mics, please. And also, can you please tell me about your study status, your preparation status? How about your practice? So your input is very important for this session. And I would appreciate your active responses in the chat box. The agenda of today's session is basically divided into three things. Number one, I would be recalling few areas quickly. Number two, I would be like doing a practice question on the ACCA CB practice platform. And the third and last agenda for today's session is to answer your, your queries in respect of any area of FR syllabus. I repeat, the agenda of today's session is basically divided into three things. Number one, I would be recalling few areas quickly. Number two, we'll be attempting practice question on ACCA CBE practice platform. And third and last, I would be answering to your queries you can ask any query from any area of the syllabus. And that's the last part of today's syllabus, today's agenda. Before moving on, let me also guide you with a very, very important thing that is ACCA VLC. What exactly is this ACCA VLC? It's basically ACCA Virtual Learning Center. It's a resource which is very important for all of the ACCA students who are taking any exam in September session. VLC stands for ACCA Virtual Learning Center. It's actually a resource which is given by ACCA you can visit this website, www.accvlc.com. Simply you have to create an account, then assign the paper or papers you are taking for September session. You would be finding multiple questions, practice questions, short videos in respect of any of the paper or papers you are attempting. All these available in computer based exam form. Before moving on, save this link with you guys. ACCA Virtual Learning Center is a link for quick reviews given by ACCA directly. Visit this website and create your account there. Assign the relevant papers to yourself and then start practicing, start attempting questions in the computer based exam form. After attempting the question from different areas you would be having, you can check your answers with the standard answers given over there. Okay. 
as i told you today's agenda is recapping a few areas from this labels number 2 practicing question using computer based exam platform on the acca global website number 3 queries session so these three are the today's agendas and i am moving towards without wasting further time i am going to start the first thing that is recapping few areas from fr syllabus quickly and basically i'm going to discuss few thing with respect to non grant assets just to define the scope just to describe the scope that how an asset is dealt with in any standard for example if you talk about is 16 the name of is 16 is property plant equipment please be clear with this thing that, that i'm not going to teach you any specific standard i'm just giving you an idea that how you can identify which uh, on which asset which accounting standard is applicable or which asset is to be covered under any standard how we decide the scope of these things i'm just giving you an idea that how the companies the entities are deciding all these things is 16 property plant equipment is for the non grant assets which are to be used in business activities and these are the assets which are of physically existed or tangible in nature so any non grant asset which is tangible in nature and used in business activities that is to be covered in the scope of is 16 the property plant and equipment thereafter another is name is is 20 is 20 is the government grants it's also pertaining to non grant assets but normally over here those non grant assets are actually dealt for which the government is providing you any assistance or money in monetary terms i repeat in is 20 the government grants all of those non grant assets will be dealt which are pertaining to the grants received from the government another is 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 23 that is borrowing cost borrowing cost is another is also for non grant assets as for is 16 there are non grant assets as far as the is 20 is concerned non grant assets are there same case with is 23 the borrowing cost again the non grant assets are there here we are acquiring a loan and that loan will be used for the construction for manufacturing for the purchasing of a non grant asset and when a company is acquiring any loan for developing for manufacturing for constructing for buying for purchasing any non grant asset that asset on on such loan when the as interest is calculated that interest is actually a borrowing cost and the concept of borrowing cost is mainly applied for there when a company acquiring a loan for the construction manufacturing of any non grant asset i'm just discussing all these thing to show you the link that in all of these standards normally the non grant assets are there but the scope of each standard is getting different due to the intention of the management another thing let's say if we talk about is 36 is 36 talks about impairment of assets again over here not the current assets but the non current assets are dealt we check the impairment of the non current assets whether is there any decline in the value of asset if there is like decline due to internal factors or the external factors so that non grant asset is to be checked for impairment and this impairment is guided by we have to follow the implications of the is 36 
thereafter and other is that is international accounting standard number 38 that is intangibles intangible is also there for the non current assets and the non current assets which are covered which are dealt under is 38 are all those non current assets which are of intangible in nature or removable in nature but they are used for business activities like logos like slogans like the customer lists goodwill is another intangible so all of these assets which are intangible or immovable in nature they are non current assets but due to this characteristic they are covered in the scope of is 38 thereafter if you remember is 40 the investment properties again we are talking about the non current assets but the non current assets which are covered in the scope of is 40 these are the non current assets basically we are we are talking about only about the land and buildings not any other non current asset only the land and buildings are covered in the scope of is 40 and these land and building if a business is holding any of the land or building for any of the two purposes or for both purposes what are those purposes start your thought process what assets which assets are there in is 40 i have told you the land on building the land and building if acquired for rental purposes or for price appreciation purposes Keep remember if any land or building held for price appreciation purposes or for rental purposes. So that land or building is covered in the scope of IS 40 businesses, not entities not using that land or building in business activities. If that land and building is being used in business activities, so IS 16 will be applied. But if any land and building is acquired for rental purposes or for price appreciation purpose purposes or for both purposes, so that land and building is actually covered in the scope of IS 40. As I told you, if land or building held for rental purposes, so that is under IS 40. But a simple question from you guys: you have you have a machine you are not using that machine in your business but you are having that machine for renting purposes i repeat i repeat my example please decide you being a business on a machine you are not using that machine that non current asset in your business activities rather you are having that machine for rental purposes you are renting out that machine to other businesses in which standard or what is the scope of that machine can you guys please identify the scope of that machine as per the scenario given yes any kit os bix rena and all of the other space can you decide the scope of that machine Anikate, you answered that is IS 40. What about others? What is your decision? If you're not clear with this example, let me repeat again. You own a machine. You are using that machine for renting purposes. You are not using that machine for business activities. What is the scope of that machine? Fortunately, all of the answers are incorrect. You are all saying that the scope of that machine is IS 40. Unfortunately, all of the answers are incorrect. Very right. First of all, your answer is perfectly fine. That is IS 16. Let me guide you why. As I told you, investment property only deals with two assets, land and or building. No any other asset is dealt under investment property. 
IS-40 is not applicable on any other acid except of these two. As per the scenario, you are having a machine which you use for rental purposes. Over here, we also studied about any land or building which held for rental or for price appreciation purposes. That is to be dealt according to the guidance of IS-40. But only the land and building are covered in the scope of IS-40. Other than this, any non-current acid which held for rental purposes. Let me write a thing over here used in business activities or for or for rental purposes. If you are having a non-current acid which you are being which you are using in your business activities or for rental purposes. Other than other than land and building, because land and building for rental purposes they are dealt according to IS 40. Over here, we are talking about any non current acid other than land and building. If that acid is basically there for renting purposes, on such acid, IS 16 is applied. Hopefully, the thing is now crystal clear. Is that fine? Or is there any disagreement? You may please ask in case of any unclarity. Good enough to know that you are clear on this. <laughs> Another thing is yes, IS-41. Thanks for your prompt replies. Next one is IS-41, that is agriculture. In agriculture, we also deal with other different non-current acids and any of the acids which is used in agricultural activities. I repeat, any acid which is being used in agricultural activities, that acid is to covered in the scope of IS-41. I'm also giving a scenario for you guys to decide what will be the scope of the acid, which I'm going to give you in my example. But before that, listen this statement very carefully. If any of the non-current acid is being used in business activities, so the scope of that acid is under IS-41, agriculture. Hopefully you are ready now to answer my question. Listen carefully. Let's say there is a security company. Security company have multiple non-current assets, for example, they have guns, they have like different equipments, security doors and alarming systems. There is a security company who provides security to other businesses, to, a, to other businesses, to other companies. And those secure, that security company, apart from other assets like guns and security doors and alarms and different things, that security company also have dogs, dogs for security, security dogs. Normally, the dog is, because basically agricultural assets are the living plants and animals. Agricultural assets are the living plants and animals. So now decide for that security company, is that dog to be treated under IS-41 or IS, any other IS? First, let's decide this thing. Is that dog to be treated in IS-41 or not? Yes. I'm looking at chat box. I repeat my question, being a security company, let's say a security company, let's say have multiple dogs and other security equipments. So what is the tax, what is the accounting treatment for that dog, which is owned by a security company? Is that dog to be treated under IS-41? Because over here, we always talk about the living plants and animals. Yes or no? Yes.
what about others only few part few like few of you actually reply to this question would appreciate the maximum answers mm -hmm. pix and poswa that security dog should not be treated as is41 asset because is41 applies on that on those non current assets which are being used in agricultural activities i repeat is41 deals with all those things which are being used in agricultural activities as you can see that security dog is not being used in agricultural activities so that security dog should not be treated according to is41 guidance the relevant accounting standard for the accounting of, of such asset is is16 the property plant and equipment i repeat why we are not classifying that asset under is41 basically is41 deals all of those assets which are being used for agricultural activities that security company is not engaged in any agricultural activity so that is the reason we are not classifying that dog to be treated under the scope of is41 on such assets is16 is applicable is this thing clear all of you please is that now clear good enough to know okay so basically as i told you that what's the agenda for today's session is the recapping of the few areas then practicing question and then i would be answering to your queries and over here i made a discussion with respect to the non current assets in all of these standards non current assets are involved but according to the intention of the management according to the intention of the company the relevant standard is decided for the accounting of these non current assets yes you can you can say in this way cordel you can you can deal this way right thereafter if we talk about let me guide you further things section a in section a there are 15 questions but these are not the mcqs these are the objective test questions otqs why we are marking it as marking it as otq why we are not saying that's mcq so basically mcq always have multiple op options like four answers like two answers but over here the question could be like the fill in the blank the drop and drag option multiple type of questions could be there and in section a each mark question is of 4 to marks 30 marks area normally a student think that from 15 questions how many from the theory areas how many from a calculation areas so from these normally as per the past papers pattern i can tell around 9 to 10 questions from theory areas and <clears throat> five to six questions are normally for calculations i know this thing that you all are aware of the paper pattern but my objective is to highlight the things maybe you are not aware of these things from the 15 questions in section a 9 to 10 from the theoretical areas and five to six are normally from calculations in section b there are three scenarios and each scenario has five questions in total there are 15 question again these are objective test questions of two marks each 30 marks area 
Section A is of 30 marks, section B is of 30 marks. These three questions, I cannot tell where from these are gonna examine. I cannot say anything because it's not TX paper. I'm also the tutor for TX, then I can specify that where CGT and IHT are there in section B. But when it comes to FR discussion, I cannot tell anything that which of the areas are examined in these three scenario-based questions. I cannot tell you. Maybe uh, a question from IS 16 or 36, maybe there, maybe um, income taxes, IS 12 is there, maybe the financial instrument discussion. So these three scenario-based questions can come from any of the area of the syllabus. Section C. Now, Section C have normally includes two questions of 20 marks each, it's a 40 marks area. So this is how we deal with the 100 marks paper. For these two questions, normally we can divide into three things. The final account question. Maybe we can say the cash flow or the group accounts. Final account means the accounts of the single company, the cash flow statement according to IS7 guidance. And the group accounts mean the consolidated accounts, the groups, the combined accounts of the parent and its subsidiaries. But normally from three to four years, I'm not talking about three to four attempts. I'm not talking about one year. I'm not talking about two years. Normally, since last three to four years, cash flow is not directly examinable, examined. In last three to four years, nowhere uh, I have seen a pure question with respect to cash flows. Rather, the question can be asked for the final accounts or for group accounts. But very, very, and very important thing, these questions are not asked in a simple manner. Whenever there is a question for final accounts or for group accounts preparation, you will see the ratios and interpretations always there. So that's the key element for passing FR. If you are thinking that in ratios, you just need to calculate the cross profit margin, the return on capital employed, the net asset turnover, no. The calculation steps, the calculation marks are minor. Let's say if there is a question for 10 to 15 marks for ratio, maybe attached with final account question, maybe attached with group account question. So you have to calculate the ratios, then the comparison, the interpretations, all of these things are very, very important for gaining marks, especially, specifically for section C. And I don't know how you actually prepared with this area, because if you are lacking in this area, it's very difficult to pass your FR exam. But if you're okay, if, if you can easily deal with the, these type of questions, then you would be passing FR exam easily. And as I marked above, the second thing for today's session is practicing question. So my question is, the question which I have selected will be covering two to three different areas along with the ratios and interpretation. I repeat, the question which I have selected for today's practice is gonna cover two to three different areas along with the discussion of ratios and interpretation. By attempting this one question, you will, an, you will have an idea that how to tackle these type of questions in real exam. Believe me, you would be having a great idea after today's session. In case if you haven't practiced any question like this, which I'm going to cover in today's session. And what exactly is that question? Let me show you. Let me show you, please. We are here 
for the FR practice exam one, basically I have opened up FR practice exam one from ACCA global website. On ACCA global website, I just assigned a paper, past paper. I log into practice platform and then assign FR practice exam one to myself. And now let me open up this one and the same step you would be following in your exam so it will be question number one like this following the navigator following the navigator i'm directly moving towards the section c question 31. it's the fr practice exam one i just clicked on navigator and moving towards the question number 31. and in case if you don't wish to attempt this question you can move towards the next one. And basically that's our question, which we are going to cover now. There are two requirements of this question. Requirement one is of eight marks and requirement two is of 12 marks. Apart from, the, apart from attempting this question, I would also be guiding you how to tackle, how to read, how to plan the things to complete your paper in a timely manner and also to complete your paper in all aspects and and the things which i'm going to tell you now are very very important and you should follow these steps while practicing from your exam kit or attempting paper in real exam please follow these steps which i'm going to tell you now number one let's say if you if you are starting section c area a question comes in front of you there is no choice of questions it's not like that you would be choosing that which question you should attempt or not all of the questions must be attempted so don't waste your time by looking here and there in section c there are two questions both questions are to be attempted and that's the splitter you can move you can move this splitter to look at the question or the requirement so it's basically a scenario of gregory company and this question was examined in september 16. it's a past paper question also given on acca cb practice platform in practice exam when you can find this question in cb form as well and also it's the september 16 exam question Can you please, all of you please, I'm requesting, can you please tell whether you have attempted this question or not? All of you please, can you please tell whether you have attempted this question or not? I'm not asking whether you attempted this one in CB format. Not yet. Not yet, okay. Hmm. So it's a very good thing that all of you have not attempted this question. It's September 16. I'm also going to open up this question in, in PDF format. Don't worry. Over there, I would be writing the relevant exam session. It's a September 16 exam question. What about you, Avas? Have you attempted this question? Okay. No worries. This one question is going to give you a great idea that how to tackle these type of questions in real exam because I have told you nowadays since last many attempts and since last two to three years fr examiner has totally changed the exam pattern for choosing question for section c when in section c if there is a question for funnel account or if there any question for group account normally the cash flow i never seen uh, any question a pure question with respect to cash flow since last many attempts Normally, the final accounts or group accounts, when examiner asks any of these area, these areas are linked with the ratios and interpretation. 
it's not like a simple question now it is evident from this question requirement one is of eight marks reply to the four observations of the ceo we don't know what are these observations but we don't want to think that we have to reply the four observations of the ceo for eight marks these are the observations raised by the ceo these observations are given in the third note of the exam question using the financial statements provided calculate the following ratios for gregory company for the years ended not year ended not for single year for the years ended 31st march 6 and 2005 and comment on the comparative performance means first of all you have to calculate the ratios for both years what are these ratios the four ratios for two years then also comment on the comparative performance note four marks are available for the ratios calculation so requirement b is in total of 12 marks and only four marks is available only four marks are available for ratios calculation how many ratios you are going to calculate for 2006 as well as for 2005 one two three four four ratios for each year means you are going to calculate the eight ratios and for each ratio and four marks are available in total actually the 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 reason is simply to highlight the weightage for the commenting from 12 marks four marks are available for ratios calculation however you would be calculating eight ratios it's about 0.25 marks 0.25 mark for each ratio and eight marks are for commenting on the comparative performance note your answer to part a and b should be reflected should reflect the impact of the consolidation of Tamsin company during the year ended 31st March 2006. As I told you that I, am, I have selected that question which is going to cover multiple areas of FR syllabus. So you can see from this note, you can have an idea your answer to part A and B of the question should reflect the impact of consolidation of Tamsin company during the year ended 31st March 6. In this question, you would be okay. Back to the PDF. I can tell you in this question, you will see the concepts with, with respect to consolidation or group accounts. In this question, you would also be dealing the ratios, calculations, and commenting. Also, in this question, you would also be dealing an area with respect to IS-33 named as earning per share. IS-33 named as earning per share. After solving this question, by discussing all above things in this question, you will be able to do the following things. You would be able to deal with CB questions, planning for attempting question, reading and planning techniques. So you would be going to learn all these things by attempting a single question. I have this question in PDF form as well, and it's basically from September 16. Are you guys ready? Should I start? Are you guys ready?
don't worry all of the pdf the recording for today's session the pdfs all things would be shared with you guys after today's session so be focused on learning rather than copying and other things the main objective is to learn the things are you guys ready to attempt this question yes sir okay and now finally how we are going to attempt this question for conceptual discussion i would be using pdfs once the conceptual discussion is completed i will be moving back towards the cb platform wherein we have this question i'm going to mark annotate this question in cb in in pdf format after the conceptual discussion i will be returning back to this cb platform and will start answering the part a and part b using the space given over here for answering the question but for conceptual discussion please be with me yes don't worry zolani i would be all uh, the, the the management and the team members would be adding you all of you in the relevant whatsapp group don't worry but all these things will be happening after today's session don't worry okay so we have this question gregory company for from september 16 attempt requirement is to reply the four observations of the ceo for eight marks b using the above financial statements calculate the following ratios for gregory company for the years and it it's not here years ended 2006 and 5 and comment on the comparative performance you need to calculate the return on capital employed the net asset turnover the gross profit margin the operating profit margin for calculating eight ratios for 2006 and 5 eight ratios in total for two years four marks are there four divided by 8.25 mark for each Your answer to A and B should reflect the impact of the consolidation of Tamsin Company during the year ended 31st March 2006, and it's for 20 marks. Read it very, very, very carefully, but before reading, look at this. Look at this. You have to plan your answer in this way. How you would be planning? read this scenario try to write the important dates important things on the rough page rough paper given to you during exam time as we are going to deal with the gregory company we have to answer requirement a which is for eight marks four observations are raised by the c by ceo of the company it means we are in need to reply these ob observations if there are four observations four replies should be there and as this requirement a is for eight marks it means your each reply should contains two points in each reply so that's how you would be attaining these eight marks there are four observations. We'll be re replying in four points, but each reply should be consisted of two points at least because four to the eight, eight marks requirement in total. This type of planning is very important to deal these types of questions. And hopefully from now onwards, you will not be simply reading the question requirement rather you would be planning your answer as well so that's the key thing to pass your acca paper not only the fr paper for passing every paper in acca you need to plan like this repeating for the last time if there are if there is any requirement for eight marks if four observations are there four replies should be made and for each reply each reply should be of consisted of two points. So four to the eight, you would be getting eight marks. 
So this planning will be vary from question to question, scenario to scenario. As per this question, I'm cutting you. Question. Gregory Company is a listed company and until 1st October 2005, it had no subsidiaries on that date. On which date? On 1st October 2005, it acquired 75% of Tamsin Company equity share by means of share exchange of two new shares in Gregory for every five acquired shares in Tamsin Company. If you remember, if you remember from the consolidation knowledge, also guiding, I'm not only covering the question answer, I'm not in hurry to complete that question. Whereas I'm also recalling few areas in consolidation. If you have ever studied about the cost of investment, cost of investment means For acquiring a company share capital, the other company, the parent company can invest in, in different manners. So the cost of investment is basically the consideration paid. For acquiring any other company's equity, the cost of investment or consideration paid can be made in different manners, the cash consideration, Number two, it could be the share for share exchange. Number third, uh, it may be in the form of deferred consideration. It may be in the form of contingent consideration. It may be in the form of loan notes consideration. A parent company can acquire subsidiaries, shares, by making cost of investment, by making consideration in any or all of these types of investments. Maybe you being a parent company, acquire the, acquiring the shares of other company by paying cash. Maybe being a parent company, you are acquiring the equity of other company by making share for share exchange. You are giving your own company share to acquiring the other company shares. Maybe you are paying this cost of investment in the form of deferred consideration, means the settlement will be held in future time period. Maybe this consideration paid could be in the form of contingent consideration dependent upon the future situation. Or for getting the shares of a company, you are issuing your own company loan notes. So this consideration can be in the form of issuing loan notes. So here in the question of Gregory company, this company acquired, this subsidiary acquired by means of share exchange in Gregory company for every five acquired shares in Tamsin company. Gregory company is issuing its two own shares for acquiring Gregory Com Tamsin company's five shares. Thereafter, these shares were recorded at the market price. This share for share exchange is recorded at market price on the day of acquisition. And what is the acquisition date? 1st October 2005. And were only the shares issued by Gregory Company during the year ended 31st March 2006. This, para, this statement shows that apart from this investment, there is no other shares issued by Gregory Company during the year. So Gregory Company basically make a share, made a share for share exchange on this date for acquiring the shares of a subsidiary company and acquired 75% share capital of that company. The summarized financial statements of Gregory company as a single entity at 31st March 2005, very, very important. Gregory company, single entity, 31st March 2005, and as a group on 31st March 2006. The results are given in two different aspects for Gregory company being a single entity till last year and the Gregory company group results for this year end. Because why these are different? Because 
during this time period on this date on 1st october 2005 a subsidiary is required by making a share for share exchange so that is the reason the summarized financial statement for previous year and it is given as a single entity and for the next year and it is given the results are given as a group company itself because during the year a subsidiary company is acquired by share for share exchange and there is only that is the only share issued no other shares issued during the year is there any confusion in this para your input is highly appreciated your active responses are really appreciated it should not be a one way communication i'm i'm doing all these things for you guys so your responses are very very important for myself are you guys okay sir so you can see is that till now we are not clear with the things that if if let's say uh, if if you guys are having the same question in your exam so can you deal this type of question answer maybe no because normally we do not practice such type of questions but examiner since last many times is always asking the candidates these type of questions so that is the reason i am i'm actually keen to cover this question for guiding you guys so that it would be helping you out in your real exam i'm also doing the working over here your start date your start date you can see year and date is 31st march 6 if a year is ending on 31st march 6 so the year start date will be 1st april 12 months back 1st april 2005 from 1st april till 1st october 2005 it was a single company on this date acquired a subsidiary and the results thereafter for group company i'm using this page as a working year start date is 1st april 2005 year and date is 31st march 2006 and a subsidiary acquired on 1st october 2005 that is very 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 important for us these dates why because you can see that this company was a single company for the first 6 months of the accounting period and this company for the remaining 6 months of the company operated as a group company and when this subsidiary acquired by means of share for share exchange those shares have already been recorded those shares have already been recorded where from i'm getting this statement because these shares were recorded at market value on the day of acquisition and were the only shares issued by gregory company so from here i am getting this statement that these shares have already been recorded okay the financial statements for gregory company as a single entity for this year end and gregory group as for this year end revenue the cost of sale the gross profit operating profit margin then profit for the year is calculated you can see when it was a single company in previous year so this profit was not attributed to parent and nci but when these are the profits of the group company in in the pnl of the consolidated pnl this profit is then divided this profit for the year there's a profit of the group companies this group profit is then divided to parent and nci so profit attributable to the parent company equity holders of the parent and nci this 6000 is divided between these two as 5700 or and 
because these are the group profits and once the group profits are calculated the group profits are divided into the parent and nci thereafter two years balance sheet is also given the non current assets the property plant equipment goodwill you can see in previous year it was nil and in this year it is 3000 so there's the goodwill calculated at time of acquisition and the acquisition date is 1st october 2005 this goodwill is always calculated at acquisition time so it means during the year this goodwill calculated at 3000 the total non current assets the current assets and the total assets thereafter you can see the change in equity last year the total share capital was 40000 in this year total share capital is 46000 other component of equity includes share premium in last year it was nil whereas in current year and it is uh, for this year and it is 6000 the share premium amount increased to 6000 because in last year it was nil and in current year it is shown as 6000 means the share premium and share capital both are increasing by 6000 and 6000 it means why when they are increasing by 6000 each it means a total of 12000 of shares capital is actually uh, the shares are basically issued for 12000 in resultingly resultingly there is a change on the equity share capital and the share premium i would be rewriting all these things while attempting this scenario in the return earning 13000 and 18700 then nci in last year there was no subsidiary in current year there is subsidiary and we acquired this 75% share capital of the subsidiary whereas 25% share capital is pertaining to the non controlling interest nci so the value of nci at this year and date is 3600 current liabilities and the total equity and liabilities other information other information each month since the acquisition and acquisition time period is now 6 months this point is highlighted over here we acquired this subsidiary after six months and post acquisition there are also six months so read this statement carefully each month since the acquisition and there are now total six months each month since acquisition gregory company sales to tamsin company were consistently two million if the two million is per month sale into six months are there so it means post acquisition time period sale is 12 million and this 12 million sale is from parent to subsidiary who is selling gregory company sale to tamsin company gregory is parent tamsin subsidiary in the post acquisition six months time period the total sales are of 12 million gregory company had chosen only to make a cross profit margin of 10 percent on, on these sales as tamsin company is a part of the group we don't know what's the actual profit margin of the Gregory company, which the company is normally charging to other customers, to other companies, to other businesses. We don't know the actual profit margin, which the parent company, which the Gregory company is charging to other companies, the other clients, the other customers, but Gregory company had, Gregory company had chosen to make only make a gross profit margin of 10 percent on the on these sales as t company is a part of the group but we know one thing that as per the scenario this parent company is charging to its subsidiary a 10 percent profit margin because tamsin company the subsidiary company is a part of the group so maybe a lower profit margin is charged as compared to the normal standard profit margins maybe as per this statement we can assume this thing and there is no doubt in this statement why we are assuming maybe the parent company listen it carefully for the last time maybe this parent company is charging any x percentage of profit margin from other customers but charging a 10 percent margin from its subsidiary company because tamsin company is a part of the group but my question is 
please listen very carefully and you have to answer my question because if you are answering my question it means you are getting my points by the way does this thing really impact the consultation process that parent company is charging a lower profit margin or a higher profit margin to its subsidiary is this thing really impact your consolidation or the group account purposes yes or no yes sir okay what about others yes sir yes sir mm. totally wrong why because for consolidation purposes there is a concept there is a concept of intra group transactions okay okay yeah, yeah. and intra group balances remember for intra group balances and transaction these are two different concepts for intra group transaction transaction mean any sale or purchase and by this word intra group any sale or purchase within group within group within parent and subsidiary these sales and purchase for consolidation purposes should be eliminated should be knocked off should be cancelled and unrealized profit adjustment should also be to be made so this would not be impacting our consolidation as parent is charging a 10% profit margin to its subsidiary whether he is charging a lower or higher percentage as compared to other customer this thing believe me would not be impacting the consolidation process because for consolidation purposes we shall be eliminating any intra group sales or purchases any sale or purchase from subsidiary to parent or parent to subsidiary and also we shall be eliminating the unrealized profits means any profit which exists between the parent and subsidiary according to the consolidation rules we have to eliminate that profit as unrealized profit so this thing will not be impacting your consolidation process whether you are selling your subsidiary you are selling an inventory to your subsidiary at a lower percentage or a higher percentage is this thing okay now okay sir good to know moving forward note two the values of the property plant and equipment held by both companies have been rising for several years okay number third so from this third note it's actually the eight marks requirement a on reviewing the above financial statements gregory company's ceo made the following observations and these are the four observation and requirement a of this question is asking you to reply the four observations of the ceo for eight marks and for replying each observation four replies should be there and each reply should consist of at least two points for getting eight marks so all these things we have planned here there are four eight marks four observation four replies two points in each reply what are these observation raised by the ceo let's see ceo is saying that ceo of the company is arguing that i see the profit for the year has increased by 1 million where from he is calculating this 1 million let me show you as a profit for for previous year is 5000 and profit for current year and is 6000 there is increase in the profit by 1000 so where that's the 
thing which he is getting from the financial statements. So you are saying that I see the profit for the year and for this for the year has increased by one million, which is up to twenty percent on last year. But I thought it would be more as T company was supposed to be a very profitable company. <laughs> Now think as your own. What should be the reply of this observation? As as per the numbers game, he is talking true. Profit margin increased by twenty percent. How we can say that the difference of these two is one thousand divided by five thousand in two hundred? That is gonna give you twenty percent. There is no doubt in this statement. So what should be our reply to the CEO? Yes, Avesh, you highlighted a very good point. Subsidiary profits are of six months. True. Generally speaking, as he raised this observation by looking at numbers, he is talking true. It's increasing by one thousand and percentage times. It is twenty percent. So, what's the doubt over here? What should be our reply? Don't worry. I'm going to guide you that what should be our reply. Number two, I have calculated the earning per share. Earning per share is IS thirty three. I have calculated the earning per share for two thousand six is at thirteen cents. How he is calculating this thirteen cents, taking the profits and taking the number of years. Six thousand divided by number of shares. There's a share capital amount, but if the par value is one, so the number of shares is also forty-six thousand. The number of shares, if the share capital amount is forty-six thousand, par value of each share is one, so the number of shares are also forty-six thousand. So he is calculating the EPS for this year is at thirteen cents. Six thousand divided by forty-six thousand in two hundred. And the EPS for 2005 at 12.5, the profit of previous year and the number of years for previous year. Profit of previous year is 5,000, and number of years is the share capital amount. But if the par value is one, the number of years will also remain same as 40,000. 5,000 divided by 40,000, and previous year EPS is 12.5. Although and although the profit has increased by 20 percent, but EPS has barely changed, a little bit change. Barely means a little bit change, no major change. There is a minor change. Again, if you are looking at numbers, believe me, he is talking true, but principally, but technically, he is totally wrong. He is making a wrong comparison. So I would be giving you time to think about what's what is going wrong in the observation he is raising by looking at numbers. You will see he is using the correct values. Where is the problem then? There is a big problem. No, not big. There is a biggest problem with this observation. Because if you know about the IS thirty three implications, you should have an idea that how IS thirty three operates and what should be the number of shares, what should be the profit, should we we should consider. So there. There is not mistake. There is blunder with this observation raised by a CEO. Is he is just taking the numbers from the financials and making the own working and presenting you to answer? Think, think, think more, write less. Think more and write less. That's the key to success for passing each and every paper in ACC. By looking at number, you you cannot come in comment on this. You cannot like highlight the problem with this observation. Number third, I would be giving you after reading these four four observation, I would be giving you time five to seven minutes to decide what's actually the problem. Then I will start discussing all these things in very much detail with the uh, with the proofs, with the numbers, with the technical points. Don't worry. But before that. i will allow you time to decide at your own what are the problem what are the problems in these observations number 3 i am worried mr ceo is very worried 
that low price at which we are selling goods to Tamsin is undermining our group's overall profitability. Wow. As we are being the parent company, very right. Mumbija, your answer is perfectly fine. You are saying that profit eliminated, so it doesn't affect. Very right. I'm happy with your answer. CEO is raising this point by looking at this. As parent company is charging 10% profit margin from subsidiary, so he is worried that the low price at which you are selling goods to Tamsin company is undermining our group's overall profitability. Wow. He even don't know, even does not know that how to make the consolidated accounts. Even we eliminate any profit margins because considering them the unrealized profit, we always eliminate, th eliminate those profits while producing the consolidated financial statement. So it will not be impacting our profits amount, but we have to tell these things in a formal manner. Number four, I note that our share price is now. Now means, now means year end. Is raising all these observations at year end, is noting that I note that our share price is now 2.3. How does this compare with our share price immediately before we bought Tamsin company? CEO wants to know the share price on this date. What was the share price on 1st October 2005? Because on this date, we acquired a subsidiary Tamsin company. So the CEO want to know the share price on this date. Year and share price is given in question, whereas he wants to know about the share price at acquisition date. So your time starts now. Start your thought process. What should be the reply to each observation? What where is the problem with each? What is the problem with each observation? As I have highlighted, the problem with third observation, and one of you have already answered that the CEO is talking wrong, uh, talking wrongly about the consolidation process because uh, this profit margin basically does not impact the consolidated financial statement. So same case, in the same manner, you have to think about all of these things. What is the problem with this first observation? As per the question scenario, he used the correct figures, but there is a technical error, but there is a technical mistake in the comparison, in the in the concern raised by the CEO, are you guys ready to identify, to think, to think about the about the statements he made? Believe me, this question is is going to open your mind in all aspects. That how to deal the any type of question in FR. Are you guys ready? Please, quick replies, please. Even you can unmute yourself. I'm not, I don't have any problem. Okay, okay, good enough. Your time starts now, it's 15 past 10 at my end. And you have five minutes, five to seven minutes time just to think about this statement considering the financials. I'm going to show you the both pages.
of factly answered by a few students. Previous year financial statements may not be comparable with this year because previous year it was a single entity, but not as a group very right. In option, only 14% is increased compare profit of single entity, whereas profit attributed were very right. Another answer is perfectly fine by Caudal, perfectly answered. Let me guide you over this in with other details as well. You can see that over here for the calculation of this EPS, for the calculation of this increase in profit, it is by 1 million. Over here, he is using the profit of 6,000, which is a group of profit. If he is fond of making such comparisons, he should, he should only have to use the profit attributable to the parent company. The 6,000 is the profit of the group, not of this parent company. Parent company profit is only 5,700. And also the other concern raised by another participant is true that a single company result cannot be compared with the group company results. So these are the two points which we can write in the reply of this observation. So let me open the relevant slide to answer to give you an idea how he is actually uh, raising this observation. He is actually taking the group profits and he also considering the previous year company results. The increase of these two is 1000 divided by 5000 into 100. So he just calculated a percentage and he is talking about profit is in, has increased by 20%. So that's basically the observation raised by the CEO. It's not the answer. Basically here we are getting the understanding that what he actually raised in the observation. We can write in the reply that the financial results, the financial results of a single company, of a single company cannot be compared. So that should be a reply to CEO. The financial results of a company cannot be compared with the results, with the results of group profits. Now linking that general point to the scenario, you cannot only write the general points. However, you have to link your point with the question scenario. The how to link, please be with me. The financial results of the single company cannot be compared with the results of group profits as the Gregory company, as a Gregory company was operating, was operating as a single company up to 1st October 2005 and as a group as a group for the year ended 31st march 2006 basically for this year for the first 6 months it was operating as a single company but for this year end the post acquisition months are 6 months for this year end it is it it, it was operating as a group company the second point we can write over here Second problem, as also highlighted by a participant, second problem with this observation, with this observation is that, is that the consolidated profit and loss for the year ended, the profit and loss for the year ended 31st March 2006, Includes includes six months results of subsidiary company in effect from acquisition date in effect from 
acquisition date first october 2005 till the year end till the year end date of 31st march 2006 let me show you from here Normally, when we prepare the consolidated accounts, we do add the revenue of the subsidiary. We do also add the cost of sales and all of these PL items are to, to be added according to the number of months of acquisition. The post acquisition things are added while preparing the consolidated accounts. So in all these results in the consolidated PL items, the six months of the subsidiary's results have been added. So there's a second problem. Although we are, we, are, we are comparing these things, but the comparison is not fine. A single company results cannot be compared with the group company results. And in the group company, only the six months results are there of the subsidiary. Where from we are taking these six months because the consolidated, as per the consolidated statements, the post acquisition results are added. Is this thing fine? Is there any unclarity in this? Please highlight if you guys are okay, then do let me know, we can move forward. And if there's any disagreement or unclarity with these replies for observation one, you may please ask. Okay, I'm just skipping number two for the time being because it's pertaining to the discussion of IS33 earning per share. I would be guiding you with respect to the second observation and reply in detail, but after covering number three and four. What is number three? I'm worried about the low price that the low price at which we are selling goods to terms in company is undermining our overall group's profitability that is somehow an easy to answer so i'm just skipping the second observation and moving towards the next observation reply to observation three should be like this the observation this observation number three this observation is contrary Contrary means different, is contrary to the process of consolidation and showing CO even don't, doesn't know about the consolidation process. We have to tell that while preparing the consolidated financial statement, any of the group unrealized profits are simply eliminated, the knockoff and we can also write, we can, we, we simply cancel the any unrealized profit between the parent and subsidiary. So at how many profit margin, how much we are charging the profit margin that would not be impacting the overall consolidation. The observation is contrary to the process of consolidation and showing the misunderstanding and showing the misunderstanding of the CEO about the fact that for consolidation purposes, we simply eliminate, we eliminate, we knock off, we cancel The intra group, intra group means within the group, the intra group transactions, and also to eliminate the related profits, the related profits, which are what are those profits which are actually the which are actually the unrealized profits so we are answering in a formal manner that for consolidation purposes 
it will not be impacting because we always do eliminate the any unrealized, unrealized profit between the group and subsidiary. Now, on the assumption that, what would be the second point to this reply? As I told you, at least we have to make two statements for answering each observation. Now, on the assumption that the consolidated financial statements, now on the assumption that these consolidated financial statements are prepared accurately. If these financial statements are prepared accurately, so all of the unrest profits have already been eliminated, thus no impact on the profit margin DCN. Now on the assumption that the consolidated financial statements are prepared correctly, we are assuming that all of the financial consolidated financial statements are prepared correctly, then all the unrealized profits have been eliminated, have been eliminated. Thus, the pricing policy, thus the pricing policy has no impact or effect on financial results of the group. So that's the formal answer on the assumption that we are assuming the consolidated financial statements are prepared correctly. Then all the unrealized profits are, have already been eliminated. Thus, the pricing policy has no effect on financial results of the group. Are you guys okay with these statements? Are you guys okay with these statements? All right, Bakes, what about others? Okay. Now it's time to think about the fourth observation. Okay, okay, Junita Cordell, okay. Now think, CEO has given you a share price at your end that is 2.3. He is raising this observation. I note that our share price is now means that your end is $2.3. How does this compare with our share price immediately before we bought the Tamsin company? We bought the Tamsin company on 1st October 5. He wants to know about the share price on this date. How you can identify? Can you guys please identify what would be the share price at that time? by looking at these values and by looking at this share for share exchange fraction, that is two shares acquired for every five, two shares issued by every five in. So can you please, by looking at these numbers and values of the share capital, can you please identify that what would be the share price at acquisition date? I'm just giving you two minutes time to calculate. Think how we can calculate this share price. Mm, you are saying that one point nine three. Anyone else, please? In observation four, he actually has given you share price at 31st March, 2006, which is effectively a year end date. At this year end, the share price 
that is given as per the question scenario is 2.3 per share. And CEO wants us to calculate the share price at acquisition time. So what he actually wants, what was the share price at acquisition time acquisition time is 1st october 2005 what is the share price at of that time it's very simple just think about these financials you can easily calculate by the way as you told uh, 1.93 that is not correct just looking at these things you can easily identify whenever a company issues share and normally in the share for share exchange transaction let me also guide you the concept then you can easily find the answer at time of share for share exchange share capital also increase maybe there is also an increase in the share premium amount at time of issuing shares share capital increased also there may be an increase in the share price because for when you acquire a shares of the company cost of investment is debited whereas share premium and share capital are normally credited so what would be the amounts if you deal with this double entry you can easily answer to the requirement when a company is acquiring shares cost of investment being asset is debited investment debited share premium and share capital credited if you make the this double entry you can easily answer the question requirement Yes, my dears. Par value of the share is given as one. In previous year, the total share capital is of 40,000. And in current year, the share capital is of 46,000. And also, in previous year, there is nil share premium. And for this year end, share premium amount is 6,000. I'm going to write these over here. 2005 and 2006, just to show you, share capital is 40,000, 2006 share capital is 46,000, share premium for this year end is nil, and for next year end is 6,000. What is the increase? You can take the difference as increase. It is increased by 6,000. It is also increased by 6,000. The total increase in value terms is 12,000. So basically you have recorded the cost of investment debited by 12,000, share premium is credited by 6,000, whereas share capital is credited by 6,000. Furthermore, the next point, as a shares par value is one, so basically you can see from here, if par value is one, previous year capital amount is 40,000. So the number of years are same 40,000. This year share capital amount is 46,000. As per this thing, current year number of years are 46,000. So if there is an increase in the number of years, in this transaction, number of years increased, number of year increased by 6,000, the difference of this 40,000 and 46,000, the number of years increased by 6,000. 
This number of shares increased by 6,000 multiplied with X amount, it's resulting in a value of 12,000. It's resulting in a value of 12,000. So what would be the that? What would be that amount to which these 6,000 shares are multiplied? So we are getting 12,000 in total. So that is two per share. So that's basically the answer of the R question. What will be the share price at acquisition time on 1st October 2006? As you can see, there is increase in number of shares by 6,000. And if multiplied with the X amount, so it's becoming 12,000 in monetary terms. So it means each year issued at two per share. The value of share at that time is two per share. Is this fine? Are you getting my point? Yes, because your answer was right. What about others, please? Are they getting my points? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Good to know. So how we can basically, I'm not only solving this question. Basically, I'm also guiding you that how to think about this scenario, the data given. So same thing I'm going to write over here again in a formal answer. Share capital of this year was 40,000 in monetary terms. And for this year, it is 46,000. Whereas share premium was nil. And in this share premium is 6,000. The difference, the increase in value terms is 6,000 and 6,000. And there is total increase in the value is by 12,000. Number of years for this year and based on the par value of one, Number of shares are 40,000 for this year and number of shares are 46,000 this year. So then change in number of shares is by number of shares increased by 6,000 and they are multiplied with the value of two. So which results in a, in a total increase of 12,000. So we can answer simply, we can simply answer this thing. 6,000 shares were issued. 6,000 shares were issued for acquiring, for acquiring the subsidiaries Yes, yes, please, please ask. So if if this per value you're saying of one dollar was for mm -hmm. example two dollars, it mm -hmm. it means that we are dividing the the total shares by that two. Perfectly, perfectly asked and answered by your own self. For example, for example, mm -hmm. I'm just changing the value of you. For example, I'm saying that uh power value feature is 0 0.5. So what will be the number of, of years here and what will be the number of years here? Can you please tell? Basically, number of years are multiplied, multiplied with the par value to get the worth. Number of years, yes. Multiplied with var value to get the total worth. If 40,000 here, so 40,000 multiplied by one is equal to 40,000, but if the par value is getting changed, it means number of shares are 80,000 multiplied with the par value. So it's resulted in 40,000 of the share capital amount. Is this thing clear now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So basically, we are actually answering the formal statements. 6,000 shares were issued for acquiring the subsidiaries share uh, for acquiring the subsidiary for a total for a total cost of investment of 12000 this means this means the price per share the price per share was dollar 2 the value 
divided by number of years. Same, we are answering, we are writing this in our formal answer. This means the price pressure was dollar two at acquisition date or acquisition time. That's the first statement in reply of observation four. As I told you, minimum we have to pass two statement. What should be our second statement or what could be our second statement? Any idea? For getting two marks for each observation, at least two statements should be there. What should be our second statement? Okay. Let me tell you the current price. Now compare, simply compare the current price and the price of here at acquisition time. At acquisition time, the price of here was two as just calculated and the price at year end that is given by CEO that is 2.3. So now you can use these two values for answering for making the second statement. The current share price of dollar 2.3 reflects what it reflects basically at acquisition time it was less and now at your end there is increase in the price per share it means the acquiring of this company is actually a beneficial uh, uh, it was a beneficial move for the company for the parent company which resulted in the increase of the share price as compared to the uh, six months the, the the price per share which was six months ago at acquisition time and the price per share at year end at year end, the current share price of 2.3 reflects that markets, markets favorable conditions or favorable view of the group of the group's current and future performance. So it's a general statement also linking with the scenario as you can see, the year end share price has now increased as compared to the share price which was at acquisition time. So increasing share price, increasing share price is a good sign for the company. So the current share price of 2.3 reflects that market's favorable view of the group's current and future performance. So that is the reason after the acquisition of Tamsin company, the price per share of parent company is getting increased. Is this thing fine? Are you guys okay? Yes, sir. The final and last step of the part one, the very, very, very important area, which is covering the both aspects, the consolidation as well as the IS-33 implications. As I skipped the observation two, because from the all of these four, Observation two is very, very important to understand. So this slide I'm, I'm actually using for getting the understanding of the observation raised by the CEO. And after, the, after getting the understanding, then we can reply over here. But first thing to know about the observation made by the CEO. In observation two, he basically talked about the EPS. Let me write the formula for your understanding EPS is calc. Also, the types of EPS. There is simple or basic EPS or second one is the diluted EPS. Let me also recall the concept here. When we talk about IS33 EPS, so there is simple EPS or also termed as basic EPS. Other type is diluted EPS. For considering for the calculation of simple EPS, for the calculation of simple EPS, shares issued in pass, and shares issued this year for which for the year for which you are working share issued this year these two shares are considered for the calculation of simple or basic eps whereas for the calculation of diluted eps shares issued in past 
and shares issued during year or this year and shares that will be issued in future time period. That will issue that will be issued in future. Why they will, they will be issued in future due to convertible securities. Due to convertible securities, the future issue of shares would also be considered for the calculation of diluted EPS. Over here, we all we are only considering the existing shares. Existing means the shares issued in past and the shares issued in current year. But over here, with existing shares issued, we are also considering the future aspect as well. Why we are actually taking the future shares issued because at times company have multiple type of convertible securities. For example, what are convertible securities? What are convertible securities? For example, the convertible loan notes. For example, the redeemable for the preference shares, convertible preference shares. For example, share option. Very right. Share options. So these are the categories of, these are the types, these are the examples for convertible, convertible securities. Over here, for example, if a company is issuing a convertible loan note at maturity date, the holder has an option whether to take the cash back or the holder can convert that loan note into the order shares of the company. Same case with the preference shares, convertible preference shares at maturity date, either they can be redeemed in cash or they can be converted into company's ordinary shares and share options. These type of options, these share options are normally granted to the employees of the company. If they, if they meet certain conditions with the company, with the business, they would be granted X number of years in future. For example, if you are an employee of, at, of the company and you are the key employee, company wants to retain you for next five years or for next three years, for retaining you at the business and company does not want to lose you, for retaining you at the job at the same position, if company is in today's date is offering you that Mr. X, if you would not be leaving us for next three years, for example, for next three years, the company would be granting you X number of years and you can avail these shares at a value which is less than the market value. And let's say now you have completed the three months, uh, three years tenure with the company. You have met the condition. Now the company has to give you the shares in future. So when the future aspects of these shares is considered for the calculation of EPS in today's date, when, the, when also the future shares included in the calculation of EPS, so that is actually termed as a diluted EPS. So in the diluted EPS, we basically consider three types of shares, the shares issued in past, the shares issued in current year, and the shares which will be issued in future time period due to the convertible securities. So that's basically the diluted EPS. Now back to the concept, back to the question. The formula for the EPS is profit after tax minus preference dividend. And this preference dividend is the dividend which is pertaining to the irredeemable preference shares. There are two types of preference shares, the redeemable and irredeemable, but the pre redeemable preference shares dividend is basically a same like interest. I repeat, redeemable preference shares dividend is not in actual a dividend, that's basically an interest. So over here, for which preference dividend we are talking about here, that is irredeemable preference shares dividend divided by, divided by weighted average, weighted average number of order issues. So that's the basic formula for the calculation of EPS. And the CEO has already calculated the EPS for this 2006, 
considering the group results, he calculated EPS of 13 cents. For previous year, he calculated the single company results. Based on the single company results, he calculated EPS of 12.5 cents. Wherefrom he got these figures. Let me show you. He basically used for six divided by 46, 13 cents. And for 2005, 5,000 divided by 40. Basically, he used these figures. 5,000 and 6,000, 40,000 and 60,000. He used these figures for the calculation of EPS. And based on these figures, he is telling you the current year EPS is 13 cents and previous year EPS is 12.5 cents. Although profit increasing by 20% as linking with above observation, whereas EPS has barely changed means a little bit change in EPS. If you look at numbers, He's talking true. He calculated this 13 cents, 6,000 divided by 46,000, the profit after tax divided by weighted average number of shares in 200. That is 30, uh, not 100, that is 13 cents. And how he did calculate 12.5 cents by considering the previous year profit divided by previous year number of ordinary share, 40,000. And he is talking about bear bear change in EPS. How he is talking about bear change? The difference of these two is only 0 0.5 divided by previous year result 12.5 in 200. So it's basically calculated as 4% increase in EPS. So that is the reason he is asking you there is increase in 20% in profits margin, but there is bear increase in EPS by only by 4%. I'm going to write the same statements to understand the concept profit increase by 20%, but EPS increased by 4%. So that is the reason he's saying that it's a barely changed. EPS is barely changed as compared to the profits. Can you guys please highlight? Can you guys please identify what is the problem or what are the problems with this observation? Your input is highly appreciated. My concern is with both of these things, which he used in the calculation of the group 2006 EPS. As for previous year, he calculated EPS for single company results, whereas over here, he used a profits of 6,000, which is a profit of the group, not for the single company. Single company profit is only 5,700. Equity parent company profit is only 5,700. That should have been used instead of 6,000. So that's the first thing. That's true. Cordell, your answer is fine. 5,700 should have been used instead of 6,000 because this 6,000 is the profit of the group. Whereas if previous year, in previous year, if single company results profit considered, so this year single company profits were only 5,700. Fix, that's fine. That's the one problem. Let me also write here, <clears throat> talking about the first strike. Profits that should have been used in EPS, that profit should be the profit after tax attributable to parent in effect 5,700 should have been used instead of instead of group profits of 6000 which includes which includes the share of nci as well the share of non-controlling interest as well. So that's the first thing. 
Mubija, you are saying that second thing is with respect to needed to wait it average number of years. True. I'm highlighting sec two hysterics to discuss over here. As you can see, he simply used the number of years 46,000. Where from he is getting these 46,000? For this year, share capital amount is 46,000 based on the power value of one. The number of years are for this year are 46,000. He used the same number of years in the calculation of EPS, whereas as per the formula, weighted average number of ordinary shares should have been used, but he used total number of shares. So that's the second problem. And when it comes to the discussion of IS33, what are the number of years for this year? 46,000. What are the number of years for previous year, which are 40,000? Although there is an increase in the shares is 6,000. These 6,000 are the right shares. It's a right issue. And this right issue, these shares are issued at market value. You can see from the question scenario, as this company issued these shares, as we have already considered the number of years as 6,000, because the difference of 40 and 46, the increase in number of years is by 6,000. These shares were recorded at market value on the day of acquisition and were the only shares issued by the company during the year. When it comes to the discussion of number of years, actual number of years that should have been used are the weighted average number of years, but wrongly, use the 6,000 shares in above observation. He used the total number of shares, these 6,000 shares, the previous year's shares, and plus the shares issued during the year and 46,000 shares used over here, that is wrong. When it, when it comes to IS33, IS33 asks you to calculate the weighted average number of shares. How we can calculate the weighted average number of years, consider the number of years at your start. Then also find, is there any element for bonus issue? And the right shares, the right issue, the number of years at your start, bonus issue shares and right issue shares. The number of years at your start, they are multiplied with the fraction of 12 upon 12. We are doing all these according to the IS33 guidance. IS33 guided us to calculate the weighted average number of years this way. The number of years which are from the year start, they are to be multiplied with the fractions of 12 upon 12. There is no bonus element because all of these years are issued at market value, evident from the question scenario. They are issued at market price. They are not issued on a discounted price as compared to the market value. If they are issued at a discounted price, so it means there is bonus element in the shares, but as they have issued at market price, there is no bonus element. 6,000 are the right shares, but for right shares as this company, when we acquired this company on 1st October 5, till the year ended, what are the number of months there? So the right issue shares, should be the month portion and the fraction that is to be used that is 6 upon 12. And this 6 upon 12 is from, what are these six months from 1st October 2005 till the year end date of 31st March 2006. If these shares are issued, if the company acquisition date is different, so we have to count, we shall count the same number of months from the issuance date till the year end time. Is this thing clear? Are you guys okay with this working? Yes, please. If you solve this fraction, 6,000 into 6 upon 12, that is giving you 3,000. And total weighted average number of years are 43,000. If we use the correct profit, as from here, 5,700. And if we do follow the corrected number of years, 43,000. So you can see, so you can see 
if we do calculate the correct dps considering the facts correct dps is calculated as 57000 is the corrected profit divided by number of years are to be used which are 43000 now it means correct dps is calculated as 13.25 cents per share so basically till now we just discussed the the observation raised by ceo we actually made all these annotations just to know that what exactly is the meaning of the observation raised by the ceo yes if shares are issued at discounted price then bonus shares is to be calculated yes for surely you would be calculating the bonus issue element and also you need to calculate the theoretical extract price before this working if the shares are issued at a discounted value before this working you have to follow you have to find the theoretical extract price terp and then based on that terp do divide the shares between bonus issue bonus shares and the right shares principally your concept is right mix so we just annotated on this slide just to know about the observation raised by the ceo we checked for the corrected figures and the corrected eps would be 13.25 going to write the formal answer here reply to the observation and for replying this observation again we have to make two statements at least for getting two marks for each observation as i told you earlier So start answering this observation formally. I would try to write neat and clean. In this observation, there are two misunderstandings. There are two misunderstandings. as discussed below why i am writing there are two misunderstanding as highlighted here first misunderstanding with respect to profit and second misunderstanding with respect to the number of year used in the eps calculation in this observation there are two misunderstandings as discussed below firstly firstly the profits of 6000 wrongly used as as 6000 is the group profit however dollar 5700 is the corrected profit to be used in eps calculation as is pertaining to adds is this amount of 5700 is pertaining to the share of parent company so that is the first statement secondly secondly the weighted average the weighted average 
number of years should have been should have been 43000 instead of 46000 based on is33 so finally concluding this statement considering the above facts so for considering the above facts below is the recalculation also show the recalculation of correct dps 5700 that is a corrected profit for, divided by 43000 which is a corrected number of years 13 point around 13.3 previous year eps is 12.5 and the corrected eps over here we calculated 13.25 i'm running rounding off here 13.3 cents now check the percentage increase percentage increase is checked current eps minus previous year eps the difference 0 0.8 divided by previous year eps in 200 in percentage terms the revised increase in eps as compared to previous year is 6.4 percent basically CEO calculated bear change. What was that bear change? 13 minus 2.12.5. The difference is 0 0.5 divided by 12.5. EPS increased by 4%. But over here, both of these figures were incorrectly used. But over here, we corrected these two figures and a revised EPS is calculated. And then a revised increase in EPS is only six, although it's, it's still Bear change as compared to the profits margin, profit increased by 20%, but EPS is only increased by 6.4%. Although it's, a, it's still a bear change, but it's, that's the actual figure we just calculated. As we have completed the first part of this question, and with respect to the first part of this question, all these things, the basic, the actual answer should have been replies replies all of these replies there's a basic and actual answer of this question part a what are the other things which we covered till now just to make you an idea just to give you an idea that how to tackle how to understand the observations how to understand the concern raised by the ceo so these are the workings to be performed at your own not should be included in the questions answer these workings are not to be included in the questions answer, but for your understanding, for your practice purposes, you have to learn all these things. In your actual answer, in your formal answer, you should only reply all these. You should only write these points. Reply two, reply three, and thereafter reply four. So these statements are the actual answer. And as I told you, we have the same question on the ACCA practice platform. Now, hopefully you can easily attempt this question after today's session. It's like your uh, home assignment that I've, I would be sharing the PDF of the answer I just discussed. I will be sharing all these files with you guys. So you can you can attempt by looking at the formal answer. You can, uh, you can try to attempt this question on a CB platform that in a way that you would be representing your answer in, in actual exam. You can reply to the four observations of the CEO here. As this space is given in the word process form, you have to write all these statements over here in the reply. So that's your home assignment. Number two, part B of the question. Using the financial statements, provided calculate the following ratios for greg the company 
for the years ended 31st March 2006 and 5 and comment on the comparative performance. Now, again, it's your time to calculate these four ratios, these four ratios, and then I would be discussing that how to calculate, how to comment on the comparative performance. And if you remember, let me guide you the formula for the calculation of return on capital employed. Return on capital employed is actually the operating profit divided by capital employed. ROC is calculated as operating profit divided by capital employed. Capital employed can be calculated in two manners, total assets minus current liabilities, Capital employed is calculated in two manners. For each and every question, whenever a balance sheet is given in front of you, you can check, you can make sure this thing that the capital employed can be calculated using any of these two formulas from the total assets minus deduct the current liabilities yes over here we are not talking about liquidity normally these from these four ratios you can see all of these are pertaining to the pnl items mix liquidity pertaining to the cash flow items but looking at the requirement, you can see that all of these of the four ratios are pertaining to the profits, the PNL items. For the calculation of capital employed, total assets minus current liabilities, or another formula can be used. Equity plus non-current liabilities. Both would be giving you the same value. You can check, you can confirm this thing. Don't believe my words for this thing you can check for each and every balance sheet capital employed can be calculated by using any of these formulas from total assets minus current liabilities or equity plus non-current liability so as in this question we have to calculate we have to calculate these four ratios roc formula is operating profit divided by capital employed net asset turnover formula is net asset turnover turnover represents the sales of the company and net assets are the capital employed capital employed is also termed as in net assets sales divided by capital employed for net asset turnover formula is sales divided by capital employed gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales operating profit margin is operating profit divided by sales profits and other things are in front of you. Let me also show you this question from PDF. So you can easily attempt these four ratios considering the financial results which are in front of you. These are the four ratios you have to calculate. And financial results are in front of you. I'm just giving you three to four minutes time for the ratios calculation. If you don't remember the formula, I'm also going to write over here, return on capital employed is actually the operating profit divided by capital employed. Net asset turnover is the sales divided by capital employed. Gross profit margin is a gross profit divided by sales. Operating profit margin is operating profit divided by sales. So you can use the formulas for the calculation. Would appreciate if you quickly uh, reply after the calculation so we can move forward.
all right so let's start discussing hopefully uh, you have tried and uh, you are also sharing your answers good to know that let me also calculate all of these things one by one you can see in requirement b there this requirement is for in total 12 marks again the planning aspect is very important four for ratios four ratios calculation four marks are available for ratios and remaining eight marks are for commenting on comparative performance required for two years these four ratios the return on capital employed roce is calculated as operating profit divided by capital employed net asset turnover is the sales divided by capital employed gross profit margin is simply calculated as the gross profit divided by sales amount and operating profit is operating profit margin divided by sales into 100 so these are the standard formulas for 2006 as per the question scenario 7500 is a gross profit margin let me show you from the question as well that is operating profit margin is 7500 divided by capital employed for the calculation of capital employed as i told you two formulas from the total assets deduct the current liabilities from the total assets deduct the current liabilities from the total assets of 101600 minus current liabilities of 27300 or other way around to add the total equity and non current liability total equity and non current liability both things both steps going to give you the same amount 7500 divided by total assets for this year are 101600 minus 27300 in 200 that is basically 10.1% over here for previous year operating profit is given as 6000 from previous year assets are total 77500 minus 24500 in 200 as 11.3% yes in total equity means total equity share capital share premium reserves retained earning all of the things which are a part and parcel of equity would be added there it's about shareholder equity and shareholder equity also includes share capital premium all things thereafter for sales divided by capital employed sales for this year are 46500 from the pnl item you can see that and previous year sales are 28000 capital employed is calculated in the same way 101600 minus 27300 in 200 that's giving you 63 percent and for this year above amounts are also used 75 77 500 minus 24 500 in 200 and over here it is calculated as 53 percent next thing is gross profit margin gross profit for this year is 9300 divided by sales amount of 46 500 in 200 that is 20 percent in total and same goes for previous year 7200 divided by previous year sales are 28000 in 200 in percentage terms it is calculated as 26 percent by the way randomly uh, the results are mixed it's more in previous less in current it's less in previous more in current it's more in previous less in current okay Operating profit margin, operating profit 7500 this year divided by sales amount 46500 and it's basically calculated as 16% and whereas last year operating profit margin is 6000 divided by last year sales are 28000 in 200 and over here it's giving you 21%. <clears throat> we have performed, we have performed the ratios calculation for both years and for four <clears throat> total we calculated eight ratios but for 
eight ratios calculation only four marks are there and remaining eight marks are for commenting on the comparative performance <clears throat> if we look at operating profit margin previous year operating profit margin is somehow a little bit more than the previous uh, than the current year yes cordel your answers are right your answers are perfectly fine you told about three cases one is left but as i'm i'm looking at your answers perfectly submitted thank you <clears throat> same are in front of you as well but how we can comment on these things very very important words listen i'm not going to tell you that how, how to write what to write but i'm telling you one thing that if you keep the thing simple if you keep the things simple it is <clears throat> going to be easy for you if you follow the these type of questions if you follow the answers of these questions from your kid from your past paper solution you would be having one to two pages discussion i repeat if you would be looking at the formal answers the standard solutions provided in your exam kit and uh, in your past paper solutions so you would be you will see that normally these type of questions are answered on a one or two pages but you cannot in fact i cannot write such material during exam even i being a tutor cannot write as much this stuff in the real exam because we have time limitations because we have pressure on ourselves during exam so we cannot write that way and the answers which are provided in your exam kit and the answers which are provided in your past paper solution are basically the standard answer and which actually cover the maxim maximum points over there but during exam we cannot write that way so what to write in during exam for this thing mark my words try to study more and more questions and answers like this for such for answering such requirements increase your reading skills by looking at question what's the scenario by looking at answer what's there in answer once you done with the reading of 8 to 10 questions like this then you can able then you would be able to write the answer in your own words not before that how you can tackle how you can grip this thing just first read 8 to 10 questions it's, it should not be a simple reading it should not be a plain reading it should be a meaningful reading that these figures these numbers are in front of you what to do with these numbers how we can interpret with these numbers so first of all give your give time to yourself read at least 5 to 8 questions and their solutions then the next question in next question you would be able to write the answer not before that if you are thinking that you are the champion you can deal like each and every type of question no you would be failing in these type of questions and again when you would be reading the answers when you would be following the study kits and the past paper solution you would be having like one to two pages solution while com while commenting on the comparative performance but you cannot do that way so reading the answers is going to give you an idea that to what extent you can answer you can write an exam how you can link the things as you can see the basic also in note of the question it is very clearly mentioned that in note of the question your answer to part a and b should reflect the impact the impact of the consolidation of tams in company during the year and it 31st march 2006 basic difference we know that as we are talking about the ratios and we have to analyze and as we have to comment on the comparative performance but the basic thing this is not that's not the like with like comparison that's not like with apple to apple comparison for this year it's a, it was a single company for this year it's a group company so the basic theme for your commenting should be based on this thing i repeat the basic thing the basic idea of your comparison should be based on this thing as we are having 2005 results the single company results and we are having group company results for 2006 how we can compare so basic limitation 
for you and analysis is the same thing and on the next page i have provided you i have provided you the simple commenting in in us in simple words these these words are not taken from kit solution these words are not taken from any past paper answer these are the simple words and i have written these just for just to give you an idea for you guys that you can also write this way comments on the comparative performance you can you can I, i'm not going to read i'm not going to explain because these are the very simple points these are the self explanatory points if you if you do right to this extent in exam you would be getting answer you would you would be getting full marks it's not like that you have to fill up like three to four slides for answering such request no 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 just do talk about the relevant point don't waste your time by writing more and more and useless stuff please don't write useless useless stuff the students who normally score any position in any paper the answer sheet the answer sheet the solution of those students are less are they 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 write less and think more when they think more they write the relevant points and what are the relevant points how we can relate this scenario you can you can like we have attempted we have attempted the part a and the partial part b to the extent of this uh, calculation we have attempted this question now you can easily understand all these points so there's a there's a way you have to write the answer in your exam but to reach at this point at least you have to uh, read at least 7 to 8 or 5 to 9 question at your own but that reading should be a meaningful reading then from the next question you can write you can plan and can write less point but the relevant points please read all these points as you have as you have done with the calculation steps now these points are giving you a, 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 a clear idea and there are basically four ratios so you can see at least four points with respect to each ratio should be there thereafter a summary whenever there is a question with respect to the comparison interpretations of the financial statement the ratio analysis a summary should always be there what what is a summary what is a like what is a main theme what is a main idea what is a basic idea of this comparison whether they are doing well whether they are doing doing bad but for summarizing these statements your tone should be maybe might be it should not be the actual you are not you you cannot talk absolutely no the tone should be this may be this might be you have to answer this way you should not write this is because how you can say this is because are you aware of all of these things so your tone for summarizing for concluding the things the tone our tone should be this may be of because this might be of because so don't give absolute assurance about anything and your tone should be may or might are you guys clear with these things my dears are you are you guys clear with these things one second sir yes yes please yes sir this may be because this might be because mm -hmm. in such way we answered yeah exactly your tone should be like this don't talk this is because of no you cannot say this is because of you have to write this may be because of this may be due to this might be due to this reason thank you sir so any other questions any other queries from your side because uh, as i told you the agenda uh, for today's session is basically uh, to recap few areas i i recap multiple areas while attempting question at the start of the discussion also we attempted a cb practice platform question but the partial is on you you i am uh, once i will be sharing the things with you you have to open up the practice exam 1 on the acc global website and then this question is available on cb form there from the answers you can write you can answer there then you will come to know that how to tackle the cb platform and if you have any query or question 
you may please ask. And before leaving, I'm going to share my contact number that is plus nine two is a country code three double two three seven eight seven three one two. In case of any query question, you may please write to me and inshallah I would be guiding you. Plus nine two three double two three seven eight seven three one two. That's my number. And also I'm sharing the other stuff. Uh, for surely that would be in English language, so you can easily understand. I would be sharing other stuff, the other practice question, the solution of the other practice questions. Don't worry. Yes, yes, I'm going to explain Codal, uh, the profits attributable to parent. Don't worry. Just note down my number. And then I'm going to explain the query raised by yourself. Normally, what happens is that once the group financial statements are prepared, once the group financial statements are prepared, and specifically the group PL, once the group PL is created, there's a total profit 6,000. In this 6,000, 75% shares acquired by company. So that is a direct controlling interest. And the other holder is the NCI, the non controlling interest. So 25% are the shares held by NCI. So it means this 6,000 profit is to be divided into the group and NCI. Group profits are 75% and NCI profits are 25%. So that's the amount of the profit given 5,700 from 6,000 are pertaining to group and 300 are pertaining to NCI. Hope that that's clear. Anyone else have any other question, please? Please don't hesitate to raise your concerns. Hello, sir, for the confirmation and, of ratio. Yes, yes, please. Should we leave only two decibel places or one like this? But uh, we do not ask in uh, questions. How should we do? Uh, your voice is somehow distorting. I'm not getting your question, actually. What did you ask? Okay. Can you please repeat? It's concerning the decimal places for the ratio. You are talking about earning per share, the number of shares? No, for the ratio, the loss for ratio. Should we put two decimal places? Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, actually, I, I'm not getting your uh, question. Your voice is somehow distorting or I, I, I'm facing actually problem for getting your voice. I don't know what's happening. So in case, okay, in okay. case, in, no, in case of asking that should she use. Hello. Okay. Okay, sir. No problem. Okay, you may you may please write your question directly to me. I, I can I I would be giving you answer there. Don't worry. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Big, you are saying that uh, I have problem in repayment of government grant. Uh, basically, go, uh, all of you, uh, there is. I'm just recalling. I'm just recapping an area from government grant. Government grants are basically divided into two categories. Uh, some of the grants are conditional grants, and some of the grants are unconditional grants. Conditional grants are those grants which are attached with some condition which the government would be giving you upon the meeting of certain conditions. And unconditional grants are the grants which are not attached with any condition. So you would be receiving that grant and unconditional grant is directly recorded as an income. I repeat, unconditional government grant is directly recorded as an income, whereas the conditional grant, the conditional grant is recorded as an income when, when the related terms and conditions are fulfilled. And in case, and in case, if 
if you are not fulfilling those conditions, if is there a repayment situation? So if you have already recorded that grant as an income, so simply convert that, reverse that income to a liability. Decrease your income and convert that income to your liability. Because as you have to repay the amount of the conditional grant back to the government, so that's not your income anymore. So that's become your liability. Would appreciate if you, if you please text your name on WhatsApp so I can save your contact number so you can ask any other questions there. All right, guys, uh, please be in touch. And I'm so I'm also going to share other links for uh, for other videos for questions practice. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining this session. And uh, good luck for your exam. Good luck for your preparation. My prayers and my help is always there for you. Um, Always welcome for your questions. I would happy to respond to you. We'll be sharing all these notes in the WhatsApp group. Once the group is created, I would be sharing all these files there. No worries. You are welcome, Cordell. Thank you. Okay, it's time to wrap up. It's time to end my session. Inshallah, see you in the WhatsApp group and welcoming your queries there. Take care and Allah Hafiz. Noted your number, Biggs. Thank you.